Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to walk you through the two different types of backup you can use with Passport. Passport puts you in full control of your Bitcoin. This means you are completely responsible for ensuring your Bitcoin is backed up safely and securely such that your Bitcoin is not lost easily to any single point of failure. Passport offers two different backup options, seed words and encrypted backups. You can choose to use either one or both of these options concurrently. After this video, you'll understand the different limitations and benefits of each type and how they can apply to your personal situation. The first type of backup is one that's used industry-wide and allows Passport to be interoperable with almost any other hardware or software wallet on the market. These are your seed words, sometimes called your mnemonic seed, and are defined by Bitcoin Improvement Proposal number 39. Typically represented as a string of 12 or 24 English words, your seed words are enough to recover access to every single part of your Bitcoin wallet, even when utilizing multiple different account levels. Here I have a fully initialized passport that has gone through the setup process and already has a seed populated. To view the seed words, all I need to do is head across to settings, then down to advanced, and then view seed words. When setting up your passport for the first time, it's advisable to write down these words onto the card provided with the device. The order of your seed words is absolutely critical, so please take great care when writing down your seed words and make sure you check them at least twice. Let's imagine some time has passed and we have lost or broken our passport. We've then bought a new device and want to recover our existing Bitcoin wallet using our seed words. To replicate this scenario, I'm going to quickly erase the seed from this device, which will then service me back onto the seed create or import screen. From here, I can choose Restore Seed, choose the length of the seed I want to restore, then Passport reminds me that it uses a unique predictive text input to make seed entry a breeze. Passport now wants me to enter the first of my seed words, which as we can see from the card on the right side of the screen, is the word Budget. To enter that on Passport, I just need to tap the number key that corresponds to each letter. So for budget, that would be 2, 8, 3. And as you can see, the word budget has already popped up as a suggestion from the list below. All I need to do is scroll down and select it from the list. From here, it's just a case of repeating that step for every one of your 12 or 24 word seed. Once you've completed the seed word entry, Passport will prompt you to make your first encrypted backup, which is the second type of backup this video covers. For now, I'm going to skip this step since we'll be covering that in great detail in the second part of this video. The wallet recovery is now complete and Passport will be able to sign for transactions of any connected wallets previously set up before replacing the device. However, if you had additional accounts or multi-signature configurations enabled in Passport, you'll now need to re-add those at this stage to be able to successfully interact with those additional features. 
Where you store your seed words should be a deeply thought out decision. Physical access to this single item grants full access to all of your Bitcoin. It takes a split second for somebody to whip their phone out and take a quick picture of your seed words or to slide it into their pocket for access later. Ensure it is always kept far away from prying eyes. Total loss of funds via this threat vector can be mitigated by the use of a passphrase, but this is an advanced feature that should be carefully considered and be sure to check out our separate video dedicated to passphrases to learn more. Your seed word backup is a single point of failure. If that single item becomes compromised, all Bitcoin within is also compromised. Because of this, you should think very carefully before making and storing multiple copies of it. More copies of your seed words multiplies your attack surface. Your seed word backup should be stored using a method that is resistant to heat, water and corrosion. Most users opt to stamp or etch their seed words into a steel plate similar to this. But there are hundreds of different options available and some are better than others so please ensure you do your research before making a purchase. So now we know how to create and restore from a seed word backup, let's recap the pros and cons. Pros. Seed words are universal. You can recover your Bitcoin wallet into any BIP39 compliant software or hardware. Seed words are the easiest option for your heirs to deal with in the event that you are suddenly no longer around. Seed words can be extremely robust when stored using an appropriate method such as steel. Cons. Seed words are stored in plain text. You should keep them far away from prying eyes. Seed words do not restore metadata, so things like additional accounts or multi-sig configurations all need to be restored separately when conducting a seed word restoration. Encrypted backups are an optional, passport-specific feature that allow you to not only back up your seed words, but also device metadata such as additional accounts, multi-sig configurations and device settings. As the name suggests, the data is stored in an encrypted format known as a 7-zip archive. The encrypted file containing your seed words and additional device metadata is saved onto a microSD card which is included in the box with Passport. This encrypted file is decrypted by a 20-digit backup code shown to you upon creation and viewable from the backup menu at any time once you are logged into the device. Upon any device state change, such as account addition or removal, or upon the import of a multi-sig configuration, Passport will automatically create a new additional encrypted backup if there is a microSD card inserted into the device. Older files are never overwritten and each new backup file is appended with a unique number. The higher the number, the newer the backup. When setting up Passport and choosing the simplest setup method via Envoy, you'll be guided through the creation of your first encrypted microSD card backup. This includes writing down the 20 digit backup code onto the card provided with the device. To create an additional or new encrypted backup, simply insert an SD card into the top of Passport, then head to settings, down to backup and then choose backup now. Passport then says it is about to create your first encrypted microSD backup. The next screen will show you the backup code that is required to decrypt the backup. We recommend writing down the backup code on the included security card. We consider this safe since physical access to the microSD card is required to access the backup. And there we have our brand new backup code, which I'm going to go ahead and write down now. And once you've written down that code, Passport will give you a quick quiz to double check that you've written it down correctly.
And once you've done that, Passport will save the first encrypted backup file to the inserted micro SD card and then show you where on the card it is saved. And as you can see, it's in the backups folder. To double check your backup code at any time once logged into the device, simply head to the view backup code screen and you can double check what you have written down. So we now have two parts to this encrypted backup. We have the encrypted data containing your seed words and wallet metadata stored on the micro SD card. And we have the 20 digit code used to decrypt the file stored on the SD card. Once again, let's imagine some time has passed and we have lost or broken our passport. We've then bought a new device and want to recover our existing Bitcoin wallet, but this time we want to do so via our encrypted backup. To replicate that scenario, I'm going to quickly erase the seed from this device, which will then surface me back to the seed create or import screen. But before I do that, let's just make a quick note that I do already have some additional accounts created, one called savings, one called wages, and one called mom. From here, I can insert the micro SD card containing my backup file to the top of Passport. Then I can choose Restore Backup. Passport will then show me a list of files contained within the SD card for me to choose from. I simply navigate to the backup file and select it. Passport then asks if I want to recover via a 20 digit backup code or via a six word password. The six word password decryption key was used only by our original Founders Edition device users. So for the vast majority of people, the option to choose here will be the newer 20 digit backup code, which as you can see is what we have here. And Passport will then give me a screen for me to enter my 20 digits. And as you can see, the device has been restored with the original seed, as well as all of the additional metadata, such as the additional accounts I made mention of earlier. Encrypted backups require you to store two things, the 20 digit backup code and the micro SD card containing the encrypted file. If you only have a single copy of these, losing any one of them means that you will be unable to recover using this backup method. No micro SD card means you have no data to restore. No backup code means you are unable to access the encrypted file on the SD card. But unlike the plain text seed word backup we covered earlier, making multiple copies of your encrypted backup file and backup code does not multiply your single point of failure. So long as these two items are never stored in the same location. So let's play that out into a scenario. You could have three micro SD cards, each containing an encrypted backup, and store one at your own house, one at your parents' house, and one at a close friend's house, completely safe in the knowledge that to your parents and to your friend, those micro SD cards are completely useless because they do not have your 20 digit backup code. You could then store your 20 digit backup code in a password manager like Bitwarden or ProtonPass, and write down another copy to be kept at a separate location, perhaps at work. You can still be completely safe in the knowledge that if someone were to gain access to your password manager or a colleague find your 20 digit code written in your notebook at work, it's completely useless without physical access to one of those three micro SD cards that contain your encrypted backup file. This scenario is of course only an example and your own storage location should be carefully considered based upon your own situation. Using this scenario, let's demonstrate the extra redundancy gained from leveraging encrypted backups. Your parents' house could flood, destroying the micro SD card they're holding for you. Your house could catch fire, destroying both your passport and the micro SD card you have in your safe that contains another copy of your encrypted backup file. 
and a colleague could steal your work notebook which has a copy of your 20 digit backup code. All of these disaster scenarios could happen at exactly the same time and you'd still be able to recover your Bitcoin. And not only that, you'd have two different ways of doing so. Number one, you could buy another passport, then head to your friend's house and grab the micro SD card they were holding for you. You'd then log into your password manager from any phone or laptop and grab that copy of your 20 digit backup code. You now have both pieces of information required to complete the recovery steps I outlined earlier. Or number two, which is for use in the very unlikely event that foundation no longer exists and you're unable to get hold of a replacement passport, you could retrieve the same two pieces of information from the same two locations, then insert that micro SD card into your computer and enter the 20 digit decryption code to access the data within. It's worth mentioning that the second option explained here should be an absolute last resort because after decrypting the file on your computer, your seed words are shown in plain text on an internet connected device that may or not be compromised. So now we know how to create and restore from an encrypted backup, let's recap the pros and cons. Pros. Encrypted backup files restore seed words and all wallet metadata. Encrypted backups allow extra redundancy without multiplying single points of failure. Micro SD cards are commonplace objects and can be stored easily, even in plain sight without arousing suspicion. And finally, micro SD cards are easy to travel with, so you could easily take your Bitcoin back up across a border without arousing suspicion. Cons. Keeping a single copy of either part does not protect against single points of failure, although as we covered in this scenario, this is easily mitigatable. Encrypted backups are somewhat unique to Passport, although, as we covered earlier, recovery is possible using a computer as a last resort. Micro SD cards, even industrial grade ones, are not resistant to fire, water or crushing, etc. And finally, having your heirs deal with two pieces of information, the first being the physical SD card contained in the encrypted file, and the second being the 20 digit backup code, is slightly more for your heirs to deal with in the unlikely scenario that you're not around. So there we have a full rundown of both types of backups available when using Passport. Don't forget that these two options are completely independent of one another. You can choose to use one or the other on their own, or leverage both types for protection against a multitude of threat vectors. Ultimately, the decision is yours and yours alone, but now you should be armed with enough information to make an informed choice. If you have any questions about backups, feel free to reach out to our support team at hello at foundationdevices.com or to book yourself onto a concierge call with our in-house Bitcoin expert to further discuss your personal setup in a more private setting.